Let's talk some sports, baby. Back to Curry. Back to Make tomorrow better than today, and make today better than yesterday. And you know what we gonna do. We gonna holler at you until next time, baby. All right, guys, with the Mahomes contract in the books, now the uh, ripple effects will be felt through the NFL. Currently, Deshaun Watson and Dak Prescott are the two guys that come to mind. Watson was drafted two picks after Mahomes and likely has the green light to negotiate his deal now. Similarly, Dak Prescott is still hard at work securing his own bag with the Cowboys and now likely has more ammo to back up his request of a contract north of $40 million. That doesn't even get into some other future stars signing their deals. So, Drink, what does this contract with Mahomes mean for Watson, Dak, and the rest of the NFL going forward? Well, when, when I think about this contract, it, it's three quarterbacks that come to mind. You name two, Deshaun Watson, um, Dak Prescott, and the third one is going to be Lamar Jackson. Here, here's the deal, and this is why I understand Lamar Jackson came a year after or so, but here's the deal. And when you look at – when you name those three quarterbacks, the closest to what Mahomes has done is Lamar Jackson out of the three. Um, so that's why I lump him in when we talk about this. But to get on topic of the two that you named, Deshaun Watson, listen, here's the deal. I don't think Deshaun – this contract does dictate Deshaun Watson's future, but I think the relationship that Deshaun Watson has with the Texans compared to the relationship that Mahomes has with the Chiefs is not the same. And that plays a big role here. First of all, I don't think – Deshaun Watson is willing to sign a contract no longer than, let's say, four years with Houston. And on the caveat, I don't think Houston is willing to sign Deshaun Watson because of his his history of injuries no longer than five years. So when you say how this how would this affect his contract? All right, let's talk about the year. Let's talk about the millions per year, because that's how it would affect. Not as far as the long term or the longevity. Um Listen, uh, Jay brought this up to me earlier. I don't disagree. I do think Deshaun Watson, if you want to get him a three-year deal, you want to pay him somewhere in between 40 to 42 million, I have no problem with that. Here's the deal. This guy has shown us that he can win. Um, if he if he didn't have such an extensive injury history, I would feel more upbeat to give him a long, long-term contract. But, I mean, the ankle, knee, you know, wrist, this, that. I mean, the guy do stay hurt a lot. But for the two million, I think that's a, that's cheap for Deshaun Watson. I think Deshaun Watson could demand probably forty five if he really wanted to. He could because that's still not touching what Mahomes got. So you're not giving him what Mahomes is getting, but you're still paying him for what he's you know what he could do or what he has done in the present. And and I think Deshaun Watson is the best thing that happened to the Texans for a long time because uh. We already talked about those quarterbacks that they was rolling out before you got there. And then you already slapped – you gave him a backhand slap when you trade away DeAndre Hopkins for a box of nerds. Like, come on, man. So the least you could do is just pay the man. Um, but then let me flip the coin here. Dak Prescott. Listen, I don't think this this contract signer did anything for Dak Prescott. Not, not, not a damn thing. And to <clears> – <throat> And I'm speaking to my, my watchers and my listeners that want to tell me that Dak deserves this contract of pay the man $45 million a year. Oh, what NFL have you been watching that Dak Prescott deserves $45 million a year? Hell, he lucky that he got $35 million a year offered to him, to be perfectly honest with you. And here's the deal. It's no one in their right mind can't, that, that can tell me that if Dak Prescott was the quarterback for the Buffalo Bills instead of the Dallas Cowboys, we're not having a whole different conversation here. Oh, but because he's the quarterback of the Cowboys, he deserves a certain amount of money. Somebody tell me when the game was on Dak's shoulders, because I could give you, I can give you that for Deshaun Watson just last year. When did Dak performance was so good that he beat a team that they shouldn't have beat? Or he won that elite playoff game. I'll wait. I'll fall for my retirement while we're doing it. Because you're not going to give it to me no time soon. So this this whole aura of, okay, well, now the market is set. 
and now Dak should ask for more money. For what? Like, give me something. I mean, they offered you uh, 35 and you said no. We, we, I think we're on the, the same uh, wavelength when we say he's not going to get a long-term contract this year. Uh, the, the, the deadline is in a few days. July, I don't, 15th. I don't, we don't, July 15th. So that's not happening. I just don't think that's happening. I don't want, I don't think it's going to be July, July 14th at, at, at you know, uh, 2359. They're going to strike a deal. Don't think that's happening. Uh, I just, he will play on the franchise tag and rightfully so. Cause that pre- for all intents and purposes, I'm gonna tell you right now, his performance has been a franchise tag performance. I'm just going to put it out there like that. His his performance is the reason franchise tag exists. Because ain't nobody finna jump out the window for your your average to slightly above average performance. And I know you're going to attack me with his stats. Oh, he did this. He did that. It's more than that. When, like, did, did we not see Mahomes in the Super Bowl when San Francisco was up and he wasn't playing the best? And we was like, oh, man, we ain't seen Mahomes look like this in quite a while. And then he turned it on. And it was, it was what it was. Give me that moment for that. You can't give me that moment. So don't tell me that he deserves to get paid more than what he's getting paid. He's lucky that he's getting thirty-one point four million dollars. Oh, where well, he played above his value. So what? That's what good employees do. You outwork your value. I mean, but you think you deserve to make as much as the CEO of Walmart because you outplay? No, 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 no. You don't. Like you want to make that much money, you perform like he performed, but you don't. So just knock it off. But I do think the third member of, of my trio, Lamar Jackson, is on the trajectory to, you know, somewhat maybe meeting what Mahomes' contract means. Because you got to think, he already run the MVP. Baltimore is playing better than they, they didn't played in quite a while because of him. He didn't change up the offense. But what's the problem here? He hasn't won that significant game. And if he don't win that significant game, listen, by this time in the next two years, we might be saying, hey, Lamar, that was cool, but we're going to have to give you that Matt Stafford because that's what you've been giving us, the Matt Stafford. Like, you've been getting us to a certain level, and then we we plateauing that one win in the playoffs. Nah, man, we need to be making this AFC championship. We need to be making the Super Bowl. I understand you got to go through Patrick Mahomes. But it's going to be a, it's going at some point, it's going to be a window that opens and you're going to have to jump through it. And if you miss that opportunity, then it is what it is. So I think this contract means more uh, for him than it means for the other two guys. But what I do like about it is this it shows you, this is what it, what it showed to me. If where you get drafted matters, right? That's what it shows to me. Deshaun Watson got drafted before him. Um, was this the same draft with jo- uh, Josh Allen? I think so. Was it was a draft after, I believe. Was it after? But my point, like, it, I think two two or three quarterbacks got taken before he did. Are you talking about, and, you're talking about Lamar? Yeah, I'm talking about – no, I'm talking about uh, Patrick Mahomes. Oh, yeah. Patrick that draft that was a Mitchell Trubisky draft. Yeah, yeah Trubisky and then Mahomes and then uh, Watson. Watson, two picks later, yeah. Okay. So that shows you, like, where you get drafted matters, man. Because, you know what? And then Lamar, you're right. I, 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 I see why you asked me about Lamar. Same thing with Lamar. He got drafted to a good franchise. You got to capitalize on that. This is why I'm, I'm very enamored with how Patrick Mahomes handled this, because he know he got drafted into a good situation. He ain't out here beating his chest, um, got his ego Oh, I'm just good. I want more money. He knows he's in a good situation. He, you know what? I think he took a very good quality from Tom Brady. Tom Brady for years been taking pay cuts, pay this, pay this guy, pay this guy. And Tom Tom Brady had 20 years of just winning. Now, he might not won a Super Bowl every year, but he just won. The Patriots just dominated for 20 years because he was smart enough to know it's about more than just getting paid. You need to do other things. And this is that, to me, is the president that Patrick Mahomes is setting. It's about more than just winning games. You have to look at the totality of everything. He didn't, he, he didn't set this franchise up for the future. He didn't, made, he didn't left enough money on the table where they could keep signing people. That's what it's about, man. That time on 45 minutes. And you're not even the, 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 
center, the focus of the offense. What are you talking about? So we're going to pay you this, and now we can't pay Amari. We can't pay this guy. We can't pay this guy. And you're not even like the, the focal of the offense. We can do without you. Matter of fact, hey, and the dog, how that arm working? You all right? You think you get on in there? If that keep messing around, we might need you. You you, you still got – you good? You, you can make it happen? All right, then. All right. So that's how um, Jared Jones was playing it for real. Keep messing around. Then that's why you hit him with the franchise tag. A franchise tag for a franchise tag player. Over to you, Jay. Hey, I'm a little, I'm a little less, uh, less concerned right now with Lamar Jackson. I think we'll, uh, we'll be back at the, uh, on the Lamar Jackson uh, angle of this subject. But the current trajectory, I expect him to come out this season. I expect more from him as a passer. I think he's used this offseason to, uh, to improve upon that, which was a big reason why the uh, Ravens were eliminated uh, by the Tennessee Titans. Uh, they were so, built so – they were built so uh, – they relied on the run game so much that when Tennessee took that away, they didn't have anywhere else to go. Uh, l- listen, he came out um, after that terrible exit uh, against the uh, Los Angeles Chargers in his rookie season. He rebounded off that. He came back stronger. I expect the same thing. And uh, he's definitely if – he, if he can have another MVP-type season and plus give us a little playoff of success – we could be right here again and talking about a, a, a new record-setting deal. But in the guys that are uh, coming down, you know, coming down uh, green money lane real quick, at least one of them is. The other one, forget about it. But Deshaun Watson, um, and back to your point about um, location uh, being such a big part of this. And you're so right because when we look at Kansas City, and we've already touched on how great that organization is, but let's not forget, he's playing for the best uh, – the best offensive coach in football. I think it's fair to say we can make that uh, make that yeah. claim. And he, now he got the Super Bowl to you know put a stamp on it. And then over the when you talk about Lamar Jackson, um, John Harbaugh's got the wherewithal and the insight to understand the type of player he has and formulate an offense specifically for his skill set. And that's one of the again I bring it up all the time. Um, this is this is how people get fired when they're so stubborn. And they think their system matters above all. No, it does not. Your system never gained one yard without a player in there that can execute it. So that's why we see uh, Jay Gruden in uh, in Jacksonville with two other offensive coaches, and we know we know that's going to be a disaster. Another, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, mm. But Deshaun Watson, I bring up Lamar Jackson and Patrick Mahomes and those locations because Deshaun Watson, when you look at those guys, Deshaun Watson's a very similar talent. I think he's just a tad below them. But it's pretty close, wouldn't you say? And when you look at that, the location, however, is nowhere near the same. Houston, as successful as they have been recently, they've been pretty successful. They've been above average. But from an organizational standpoint, they are not structurally sound. We don't know where the we don't know where ownership is or who it is. Bill O'Brien over there wearing two hats when he needed to just leave one on his head because the other one don't fit. He is not an NFL GM. And when mm-hmm. you take all those situ- when you take all those factors into account, I'm surprised Deshaun Watson wants to be there for any amount of long term, whether it be three or four years or whatever he's looking at. But back to what I said earlier, I've seen enough from Deshaun Watson. I understand. I think the the health concerns. I think that I think there's some validity there, but I've st- I've seen enough to where I feel comfortable offering him a three to four year type deal in the forty million dollar per year range. I think that's about fair. And you talk about the other top – my other top five quarterbacks, we're thinking about Lamar Jackson's in there for me. And Russell Wilson and Carson Wentz have already been paid. So we got them out the way. Deshaun Watts is the next man up for me. I don't think it's close compared to some of the other guys we're seeing. And then the other guys in the 2018 class, your Baker Mayfields, your Josh Allen, Sam Donalds, none of them are even close to this uh, stratosphere we're talking about right now. Um, despite what they may think or their agents may want to come up with based on this new big time mega deal for Patrick Mahomes. And that gets to where that gets to Dak Prescott. Because another part of the, the brilliance of what I think Kansas City's done, and I don't even know if they even factored in this, but when you go from $35 million a year at the highest paid quarterback level for Russell Wilson, it makes so much sense to up the ante to such a degree, even if in the fine print it's team friendly in the first half of this contract, make it look ridiculous. Because other teams, it's going to put them in a bind. 
because now you got lesser talented dudes because we know, we know what it is in terms of, of NFL contracts. Who, whatever, whoever's highest paid today, is it's not that long before the next man up and he's going he's gonna, to uh, uh, supersede that contract. That's what, uh, that's what players and their representation are looking at. Oh, 45 is the new number. All right, we're we going for that. The problem is nobody else coming up except Lamar, and again, Deshaun is close, but none of these other guys, including Dak Prescott, is even close. I mean, think about this. Dak Prescott, 30, they offered him $35 million a year. They said, Dak, we're willing to make you, not make you the highest paid quarterback, but we'll put there right up next to Russell Wilson. I don't know what about that didn't sound good, but Dak Prescott said, no, I, I, I want more, or I want maybe it's, I want four years instead of five years. I don't know. But this is what I do know. Um, Dak Prescott is uh, on the franchise tag. The deadline is in five days. We've been talking about this for almost a calendar year. There ain't no way in hell they're getting this done. No way, no way at all. And, oh, by the way, since we're talking about, um, you know, what have you done for me? What, what did you do for me last year, Dak? Well, let's think about this. Because it may be unfair to some, but quarterbacks, more than any other position, are tied to wins and losses. That's just the way it is. And what did you do for me last year in terms of wins and losses? With that outstanding supporting cast you had with you. you p- they paid Ezekiel Elliott. They got Amari Cooper paid. You bring it, they, they got you a number two wide receiver, Michael Gallup. You got a, now you got a, another number two receiver and a rookie in C.D. Lamb. Your offensive line is outstanding, despite the fact that Travis Frederick is retired. You got, you got defenders all over. You got Demarcus Lawrence, Jalen Smith, uh, Van Der Esch is over there doing stuff for you. Um, they had to let go of Byron Jones, but you did have his talent on the field for you. And despite all of that, Cowboys were 8-8 eight and eight last season. Eight and, you, and, they, and, and they went out there and lost to Carson Wentz in two fish sticks. About as up eight, eight and eight, about as average as you can get. And uh, let's not forget this. Um, half of those wins, yeah, they, they came courtesy of the lowly and pathetic Giants and Redskins. And then we look at the rest of them. Let's see. Uh, you beat the Miami Dolphins in week three. Um, that was at the point in time where we wondered if the Dolphins could win a football game, much less five that they ended up giving us. And then, uh, yeah, you beat the Eagles. You beat the Eagles 37-10 in week, uh, in week seven. It's customarily the Eagles. They like to play around in the first half of the season lately. Um, and then what else did you do for me? Oh, you beat the Lions. That, that's great. And then you beat the Rams, who were, you know, slightly above average. And I think, I think that – is that it? That's it. I, I thought there was more for some reason, but there's not. That's it. So when you look at that, um, I, can't Im- I can't imagine why the Dallas Cowboys have any incentive to look at Dak Prescott and his representation um, with any sense of, 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 of seriousness right now. We gave you 35 just because the best the best young gun is smoking is getting 45 to 50 now, what does that have to do with you and your average performance in terms of wins and losses? I understand your, your career highs and touchdowns and passing yards. That looks real cute, especially the empty calorie yards that we're getting when we're getting smoke checked by some of these, these teams that actually matter. I don't know what that has to do with it. So to me, it's going to put teams in a bind, and teams are going to have to make decisions. Do we want to overpay for this for this average mediocre talent and want to put them on par with the with the best quarterback in football just for the sake of the market? Some teams are gonna have to make decisions whether they do that or just recycle back to the draft and try it again because some of these guys just ain't worth it. Yeah, this uh, this ripple effect is like you said, it's gonna be very interesting because once a guy sets the market like this, like you said, it, it gives it really gives players more leverage in their in their negotiations because then you kind of have like a benchmark, and it makes more sense now that Dak's team would have turned that down because I think they re- they probably knew this extension for Mahomes was coming, and they'd have been silly to sign anything before Mahomes' deal got done because look, we talked about with, with y'all are absolutely right. Is Dak worth anywhere near? Is Dak worth thirty five million? No. He's probably worth $30 million in if you actually pay people based off of what they did, right? But we all know the negotiations in the market are separate from the player themselves. And Dak's agent can now go in there and say, hey, look, my, my dude ain't 50, he ain't $45 million good, but is he really $10 million worse in a year than Patrick Mahomes? And logic says probably, but we know that's not how it works. And Dak's 
agent just got the best news he could have got, which is this outrageous contract. Because like you said, Jay, now the Cowboys are paying into a corner. Do we overpay this above average but not great quarterback just because that's what the market says? Or do we throw away a known commodity and we go fishing for a Ryan Leaf or a Patrick Mahomes? I don't know what I'm going to catch. I'm just going to cast a rod and find out. That's scary. And you know some of these teams with the salary cap rising are going to think about that kind of stuff. But would, it makes and, more and my, sense why they did it. And my response to that was, I would rather go fishing and roll the dice. Are the, let me ask you this. Are the Cowboys winning the Super Bowl with Dak Prescott? Probably not. Oh, then, what, then, then what does what? it matter? You play to win the game, don't you? They're not Yo. winning. Well, you play, just, to, you, play to, you play to make money, too. And we all know the Cowboys make a lot of money. So Yeah, they do. But I guarantee you, you could – Yo, I, that, I'll tell you what, that better not get hurt this year. He better not get hurt and let yep. Andy Dalton come in there and win. Let when Andy Dalton come in there and pull games. up. Yep. Tell him, yo, let him get hurt and he went and he pulled a Teddy Bridgewater. I'm, yep. And then everybody like me and like Jay, we're going to be like, that's what we was talking about. It wasn't much of a difference. Like, he can sit here and beat his chest about the market all he wants to, but like, I just don't. I don't think he has the Cowboys in the corner because if he did, he would have got paid already. Maybe, but like I said, I, I don't know. that You always know these negotiations. They go different than logic dictates. I mean, we'll see. But it, like you said, it doesn't look like that deal is going to get done this year anyway. So we'll worry about that next year. We'll see Lamar Jackson's deal possibly next year because like y'all said, he'll be in the same position Mahomes is if he has another MVP caliber season and gets the Super Bowl and all that fun stuff, especially if he beats Mahomes, then boy, look out. But uh, I think the other two things you're going to see real quick from this is guys like Russell Wilson, and Aaron Rodgers, they might be calling their agents saying, hey, can we work on our deals? Like, we're, we, ain't, we ain't that much worse than this dude. I mean, they just signed both those deals, and those are, those are only $35 million per year deals, and they're not for unrestricted free agents until 2024. So yeah, maybe down yeah, the I, line, you know? I um, think it ain't, it ain't going to be Aaron Rodgers. If Aaron Rodgers so, calls no. his general manager, it's just going to be to hang up on oh, him. Oh, no, he'll get he, – yeah. He's got no interest in talking to – He'll turn on ESPN. He's he got cut. <laughs> but uh, Russell, Russell Wilson might have reason, too, because you know uh, you know how Seattle's Seattle been treating him for years. Like, he's been carrying that team on his back. He, he's just a shade under six foot. You know it's got to be heavy from time to time when they won't give him an offensive line and they just say, hey, he don't, he don't even need an offensive line. He just run around back there. He'll he's avoid nasty. all the sacks. He'll do it all, which, I mean – I mean, it's not like it's an ineffective strategy because they, they're relevant and they're winning to some degree. But, I mean, you give him a little bit more, he's the second best quarterback in football. Right. Because I know, wonder – yeah, go ahead. I, I was going to say, you know what Russell Wilson should do. Not not necessarily ask for a, a contract negotiation, but he should be like, listen, I don't want to restructure my contract, whatever. I, but give me a wide receiver. Give me a tight end. Take that money. That's the gap between me and Patrick Mahomes, evidently. And give me somebody to throw the ball to because I'm tired of throwing the ball to the walking dead. I want to get – give me somebody other than Doug Baldwin. You know what I'm saying? That's what you should do. God, this is ridiculous. That's a, yeah, and if – yeah, use that – the money that you're misusing, use it better. And if you're not going to use it better, just give it to me. I'll take it. But, yeah, yeah they could do better. <laughs> I'll hire myself, third party. Yeah, the uh, – because I just wonder, because you look at this contract, it's so, like – market setting and normally we see like a guy signs for 33 and the next guy signs for 34 and then 35 mm -hmm. this is a huge leap so i wonder if there's yep. any secondary effects in that and then finally we talked about before the show i wonder if other position groups are going to try to use this like you know i, I used jalen ramsey as an example earlier with the corners but like these like really elite players at some positions are they going to be able to argue that hey this guy is his best positions player and he's making whatever percent more so i should too i don't know if they're going to but it is possible so that's just something else we'll see down the line but yeah this this contract, I think, is going to have a lot of implications for years to come.